Welcome to Decades of Horror, the classic era. Uh, let's see here. Herbs from beyond ten fells. Besides ten streams, of course. Some graveyard soil. The balls of ten bull moose. Also the strength of ten bull moose. Sakonila Wafer, the wizard, can bring back lost reindeer. Sakonila the Wafer, the great wizard, can raise the dead. <laughs> One more ingredient. This is episode 151, recorded May 7th, 2023. Gruesome Magazine. <laughs> the most important part. I am your host, Jeff Moore. On this podcast, we cover the good, the bad, maybe even the ugly horror films release. Did I miss an ingredient? Uh, no, no. Oh, okay. The, the boogers, that was the most important. Oh, that was the one. secret one. Yeah. That's yeah. the strength of the ten bull moose. Uh, <laughs> so we cover the good, the bad, maybe even the ugly horror film release since the beginning of time through 1969. In each episode, we'll discuss the monster spirits, psychos, and villains that have haunted movie-going audiences since the dawn of film history. I wrote that. You wacky kids. You did. <laughs> uh, Decades of Horror and Gruesome Magazine are partnering with Play Now Media on several of their channels. Uh, Decades of Horror, the classic era, is on the classic sci-fi movie channel, the classic horror movie channel, and the Wicked Horror TV. And, uh, you know, they've got like, I think they have like 50 channels. So I'm just going to throw one out there. They have a pro wrestling, all-star wrestling channel. And they claim they have Everything. more all-star wrestling footage than any other channel in the world. Yes, they actually say that. <laughs> so, you know. That's a bold statement. A lot of horror fans are, are uh, pro wrestling fans. Yeah. So yes. back back to the, uh, I think the description talks about going back to the 70s up to current. Oh. So anyway. I might have to check that that's, out. That's something to check out. It is. Um, all right, I lost my script. With me this week are my incredible co-ghost. 150 <laughs> episodes, and he's still reading off the piece of paper. I do, I do. I can't remember your name. Uh, Two syllables, first up I can't is, remember. First up is Chad, uh, among the many things. Up First up is Chad Hunt, co-host on Decades of Four, the All of Them, film producer, director with Wreak Havoc Productions, and a comic book artist and writer and professional interrupter. How are you yes. doing, Chad? <laughs> I am strong like bull testicles of moose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was going to tell you, Doc, I gave uh, everybody on the 80s, I gave them all a 50% raise. I figured you'd be okay with that. <laughs> Told you what. Also with us. I, I like that math. I like that math. <laughs> also with us is Daphne, who is awesome, stupendous, and like as hell. Daphne, how are you doing? I'm doing really good. I'm doing really good. That's good. It's always great always... to see you guys. I look forward to yeah. it. Yeah, me too. And also with us is the one, the only, Doc Rotten. How oh, rotten are you more. today, Doctor? Oh, I am so rotten. Are you? Glad you're in another room. There's no how rotten are you? Come <laughs> how on. rotten are you? Oh, sorry. How <laughs> rotten <laughs> are you? I, I got to hear the answer to this. How no, rotten I don't have an answer. It's all right. Oh, exactly. Okay. exactly. The, the goof is the answer. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> all right. So on this how, podcast, we, uh, <laughs> we start with some basic details of the film we're covering, followed by each of our first impressions of the film, taglines, and a bunch of other stuff. And there's, there's, I had to dig for taglines for this one, Chad. So uh, you, you'll get off pretty easy. But our uh, film not as today, easy as the last podcast we did, where there were no taglines. Yeah, that's true. The Zombie Three had no taglines. <laughs> anywhere they couldn't afford tagline Didn't um so our film today is the white reindeer from 1952 a finnish film directed by eric blomberg written by eric blomberg and miriami kosmanen the cast includes miriami kosmanen kalervo nasia arvo lahesma aki lindman uni tapiola and if i mispronounce Ooh. those i'm sorry um, the production yeah, company, the yeah, the, the production company is, uh, Sumi Filmy, which 
IMDb has it wrong. I'm going to have to send them a thing. It says junior filmy. I don't know where they got that, but it, it says right on the opening title of the, of the movie. Um, it was filmed in Finland in the upper areas. And I, you, I don't, don't get too worked up. I'm actually going to show you a map to show you where this was filmed because it's, it's way the hell up there. Uh, in Inari, Inari, Ivalo, and Utsioki and some other villages around there. It was filmed from March 20th to June 7th, 1952, released July 18th, 1952. The budget is estimated to be $33,000, also known as Valkoinen Piura, which is White Ranger. That's the original title. Uh, the synopsis is a newlywed woman goes to the local shaman to get some help with her love life, but instead... There are some tragic results. Uh, and actually, I don't know. That's not what it said in IMDb, but I didn't want to give the whole movie away in the tagline. <laughs> anyway. Make your own synopsis day here. At yeah, the it is. It is. So this this slide is a good example of the type of setting and scenery that this is set in. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's so a lot, anyway. of, lot of snow. Lot <laughs> of snow. Lots of reindeer. So lots of skiing. All right. Well, this is my pick, but I am not going to go first because I want to hear what you guys have to say first. And I would like Daphne to go first. What did okay. you think of White Reindeer? She's so special. See, um, <laughs> I really liked it a lot. I thought it was atmospheric and that the, the actress who played the main character was incredible and uh, I don't know how she she changed her face so quickly a couple of times that I almost wondered if I missed something <laughs> and yeah. uh, I, I thought the story was great I love the mythology um, I like the pacing um, I thought it was really good I really enjoyed it I'm glad that we got a chance to see it that's all okay <laughs> Chad two thumbs up excellent what did you think of <laughs> the white reindeer um, well the way May's been going I, I figured this was going to suck big time mm. for movies but um, oh. and plus I knew Jeff picked it so I wanted to hate it so I could really get under his skin <laughs> about it but I can't say that uh, this was oh, a very very uh, uh spellbinding movie i'd say it's um the lead actress was phenomenal uh she really when she was on screen she commanded the screen um yeah. all eyes were on her um and she she did make this transformation into the are we giving stuff away? I guess so. This sure, movie's only sure. Like well, yeah, well, I should say it's a spoiler <laughs> podcast. So I don't know yeah, why I cared but, about this synopsis, but but um, if you haven't she, seen this, go watch it. Yeah, she gets ah. she gets a sort of a spell put on her where she turns into a white reindeer, and also a vampire creature, and uh, it was just it was an amazing thing. Some parts I didn't really understand, and I think that's a cultural maybe uh, thing, but. Um, Overall, it was very, very interesting uh, film. And I did notice something, Daphne, when she did have the fangs and the vampire mm -hmm. fangs. Mm -hmm. Her eyebrows turned up. Did they? A little bit. If okay. you know, if you mm -hmm. notice, they would turn up a little bit almost, you know, to mm -hmm. make her look more evil, I think. But uh, just an amazing, an amazing uh, film. And the, the characters were, especially her, were just phenomenal. And uh, yes, I, I really, really dug this. Oh, great. Uh, <laughs> doctor, how about you? Had you heard of this or seen this uh, before? I what did you knew think? nothing about this until you're like, what, reindeer? Um, <laughs> we're watching a Christmas movie? <laughs> uh, it's not. It's not a Christmas movie. And then I was like, how is this a horror movie? And it is. It is. It does have horror elements, but it's a little bit more on the fantasy side. But it is, it is, it's, it's, it feels, even though it's a 50s film, it feels very 30s to me. Um, and in fact, I, it, the dialogue is so sparse. It felt like a silent film a lot mm -hmm. of times. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a lot of sequences that are, you know, just people 
scooting through the snow on skis and chasing down reindeers and stuff, literally. And it was uh, it was incredibly fascinating. I was fascinated by this movie. I, uh, I enjoyed it. I didn't enjoy it as much as the two of you did, but I did enjoy it. Um, but I think the lead actress was spellbinding. I was every time she's on the screen, she's on the screen a lot. Mm-hmm. It, it's just she's mesmerizing. Is that the word you use, Chad? She is. She just mesmerizes you. Mm-hmm. And um, and the way they filmed her, because they they would focus on her, right? And the 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 light would be harsher on her or or yeah. dimmer around her. So you get this very subtle spotlight effect, and it was. I don't know. It was, it, I was so grateful she was in it because whenever she was in it, it was like it was just mm-hmm. like it's it's mm-hmm. just made the whole film feel poetic and kind of uh, lyrical in that way. Um, yeah, I, I was, I was, I was, I was, I didn't know what I was in for, and I, I found it to be an entertaining hour and five minutes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, it's it's definitely something that I wouldn't go after myself um, without knowing anything, and mm-hmm. I, I feel like I've seen a bit of uh, film history now that I've never yeah. seen prior. So I, I thank you for that. Speaking of, well, good. of the lit her and everything it almost they had a jacques tournier vibe going mm-hmm. like a cat people vibe um with the shadows when they, and it not when she was outside or anything but mm-hmm. when she was inside by the fire and um and some of the scenes where she's in deep shadow and mm-hmm. shadows are falling across her face yeah. reminded me a lot of his movies well that one scene when she's in the crowd and and she's not reacting and everybody else is yeah uh, right, um, right. It's, it's the wedding right the wedding right yeah it's the other and, the other the other and couple she's, and she's just like mm-hmm. almost frozen and mm-hmm. and the poor guy that's getting married is like can't stop mm-hmm. looking at her like dude yeah. you better stop you're gonna i'm gonna eat you lose those <laughs> putting a spell on here, yeah. balls if you don't watch <laughs> something like that so yeah i so i found out about this uh when we first started this podcast, I went looking for lists of movies and movies that I didn't know. And I found two lists of the best horror films of 1920 to 1969. One was on Bloody Disgusting. One was Rotten Tomatoes. And the one on Rotten Tomatoes listed The White Reindeer as the best for 1952. Um, it was a bit of a slim year. The other one listed... Uh, Sudden Fear, which is actually more of a noir. Um, but anyway, uh, so I went looking for it, and I couldn't find it anywhere at the time. So every every so often, I'd kind of keep an eye out for it, and I finally found it. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that later, but I got a Blu-ray of it from England, and I have a, a Blu-ray player that would play that. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. anyway, I watched it once when I got it a couple of years ago. And I've just kind of been waiting until there was a, a decent streaming. And I think the YouTube, did you guys all watch it mm-hmm. on YouTube? I watch on YouTube. It's yeah, it a good, good, good print. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was pretty good quality, I think. Um, so uh, at any rate, I I love this movie. This is right up my alley. All of the of the imagery, the the setting, the cinematography, the it's got pieces of it's you're right, it almost feels like a Luton you know, or a, or a noir, all the shadows and things and, and dark and light, especially when you had you going from snow, you're going to dark, you're, you're in the. I shaman. said Jacques Tournier, but, didn't I? Uh, well, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. You Did could, I say that? I think I said Jacques yeah, Tournier. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. What it, I don't you, know you wouldn't I remember right. anyway. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I, you you think I listen, right? <laughs> anyway. Now I uh, now you know. Um, I I just absolutely love this. It just fits right up my alley. It's super atmospheric. Yes, the lead is absolutely amazing, and uh, the, the cinematography again. Um, Gorgeous. I don't know that I can say enough about it. It's actually very expressionic, uh, expressionistic too, in a mm-hmm. lot of places. So um, it's it's just very cool. So um, don't think you're going to get gore. But you are going to get a shape-shifting <laughs> rain beer vampire. 
<laughs> yeah, sort of shape shifting vampire reindeer, something like that. So, did uh, you say reindeer? I did say reindeer. <laughs> I love that stuff. <laughs> rain beer. Oh, rain beer. Yeah. I haven't, I don't know that brand. Sounds like a pie. But anyway, rain you beer. might so. not, you might not see any gore, but there's definitely gore implied. Yeah. And I, and I feel oh, like yeah. that's done really, really well. Yeah, and and we're not we don't get too much into uh, special effects like when she mm -hmm. shape shifts to a reindeer. It's mm -hmm. just a cut. Yeah, you know, but the, it was the human cool, kind of wasn't leaps. It? Yeah, what's yeah. that? Yeah. I, I thought cool, it was though. great. Yeah, you yeah. Cool. She's, she's kind of leaping off things, screen, kind of. and then you see the the reindeer uh -huh. leaping into frame. You mm -hmm. know, so, mm -hmm. and um, then they did that kind of negative, um, that negative shot of the deer. I think the first yeah. time you see him. So mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting stuff. So I wanted to, this is based on, I, I'm, this is the only little short lecture I'm going to give, I promise. <laughs> I'm going to be as quick as I can. Did that, did any guys look up into the folklore of this or the uh, indigenous people that this comes from? Anybody? No, I didn't. I did just a, just a teeny little bit. Yeah. Well, I'm it gets, sure, yeah. yeah, the farther you go, the, the more confusing it gets. It's like if somebody tried to find a <laughs> synopsis of native americans mm -hmm. you know it ain't gonna happen you know there's all these different tribes different places where they are now isn't where they started we don't you know mm -hmm. so that's that's kind of what i started looking for but so this takes place in uh amongst the sami people s-a-m-i and it's pronounced that way uh they were at one time called laplanders but that ended up being a derogatory term it sort of like a lot of ethnic terms started to mean things like lazy and, and dumb and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So uh, they would prefer Sammy. So this is a, uh, a little map. And I put this circle on here to show you that little spot there, mm -hmm. that circle, that, that nub sticking up from Finland. That's the area where this movie was shot. And that dotted line across it, that's the Arctic Circle. Wow. So it's quite a bit north of there. It's up um, there. Bordered mm -hmm. by Norway and uh, Russia. And just to show a little more, there's a there's actually an area called Lapland. And I don't know exactly how these, it, it, they called it a region in this map. So that area is referred to as Lapland, which the part of this, where this movie was filmed is just a small part of that. So, hmm. and this is where we were at. Just that nub sticking up kind of a close-up of it. I want to live in Hammerfest. <laughs> On the last slide. It, was there a Hammerfest? Hammer it sounds it's cool. Where do you live? Hammerfest. Oh, look how oh, I see north that is. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's, that's Norway. So That's up there. So anyway, uh, yeah. And so as best as I could tell, uh, one of the cool things about the Blu-ray is there's a I mean, it's, it's not very long, maybe 15 minutes, about the life of the reindeer herders and mm -hmm. how they do that. Because I was trying to figure out how the hell do they, you know, they don't have corrals. Mm -hmm. They're not, mm -hmm. you know, and so uh, apparently, and I probably have something screwed up. So if somebody hears this, I wonder if I should probably uh, email TJ. You remember him, mm -hmm. Doc? He lived yeah. in Finland. Um, and ask him. If he's got a, a, a shorter explanation or not, but uh, it sounded like what they did was they would go out and do like a roundup, which we see on here. They're bringing them all back, and then they put them in a big giant corral, and then gradually sort them out. So that's when they show them roping them and and yeah. you know, sort of like the equivalent of bulldogging only with a reindeer, and pull them into the smaller corrals that are divided by individuals. And then they decide what they're going to do with them, if they're going to sell them or if I, I don't know what else they do with them. You know, it's sort of like the uh, Plains Indians and the Buffalo, American Buffalo, I think. Um, but anyway, I, I just found it really interesting. So that was that was their life, you know. And, uh, and they race. So that's where they like to race reindeers. Yes, they did. <laughs> I, I may actually have sort of an after picture of that. But anyway, so I take a look at some posters and I, I just... This is the the standard one you see everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, look! They got the um, Northern Lights in it. So. <laughs> yeah, and we have the uh, 
the happy Perita and mm -hmm. yes. sort of the savage Perita mm -hmm. behind her. Kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, this, I don't know what language this is. I put it in the translator and it had trouble with it. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I think it's some uh, Eastern European country, but I don't know mm -hmm. which one. But this looks like it would be a, you know, a happy, a happy family comedy mm -hmm. or something, you know. <laughs> Yep. Um, yeah. It's like a musical almost. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The hills are alive. So French. <laughs> I like that. That's interesting. Yeah, it kind of went with that that uh, yeah. negative scene, mm -hmm. right? Interesting sure. line art there. What do you think mm -hmm. of that, Jen? I like that. Sort of Frank Miller-ish. I see it. Yeah. And... Sweden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We go right to the Sweden. end. Mm -hmm. And all of these titles, everyone I can translate is just the White Ranger. Nobody messed mm -hmm. with that. And this one is Czech. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Billy Sob. And that means like white creature or white reindeer or something. I... Billy's an SOB for sure. Mm -hmm. So that, just a photo. That's a lot that, much hard to... that looks like a magazine you used to find on the chair next to you in the barber shop when you were a kid. <laughs> the travelogue, yeah, National yeah, Geographic. Like <laughs> the director is Eric Blomberg, and he co-wrote it. And uh, I forgot her last name already, but Mirami um, was his wife. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Um. And one of the things, actually, you know, on the Blu-ray also, uh, the commentary is done by Kat Ellinger, the mm -hmm. editor of uh, Diabolique, and I think she's huh. produced or directed a, a movie recently. Mm -hmm. I can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, uh, she does a fine job, and she talks about their life and et cetera. And apparently she was a lot like this character. Um and so she and she came up with the whole idea and she and her husband wrote the script and her husband was also the cinematographer and did the editing. So, mm. uh, did anybody look into her at all or, or uh, did you learn anything about her? I or... did look to see what other stuff she'd been in because she was just so, I don't know. Fetching is the only thing that's popping mm -hmm. in my head. Um, enchanting. But um, so I just saw that she wasn't, didn't seem to be in a lot of other movies, um, but I couldn't go much deeper than that. Yeah, she had, she didn't work much after this, actually. Mm -hmm. She only did a couple more films and then she wrote a couple more scripts. And I think she, I saw that she passed away in 63. Mm -hmm. So 10 years later. Yeah, so yeah, but the camera loves her. The camera does love her. Oh, it absolutely. does, yeah. Well, um, Kat Ellinger described her, and I, I believe it just by what happens in the film, as being a lot like this person. So maybe we should just talk about her character, and then we can mm -hmm. fold it in there. But being, uh, you know, holding her own and not being afraid of, she wasn't like the other women. I mean, she's out on the reindeer drive or, or mm -hmm. whatever they called it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, she's out there bulldogging reindeers and lassoing them mm -hmm. and all kinds of stuff. So it's not, uh, she jumps into the reindeer race, which nobody else, mm -hmm. there aren't any other women in it mm -hmm. as far as we can tell. So mm -hmm. that was kind of neat. Snag like, her husband. Um, we should <laughs> mention, yeah, yeah, it did. We should mention that the very beginning of the movie, we see this woman trudging across the ice and oh, snow, yeah. and point. she's she has the she actually has uh, Perita as a child and and leaves her at this village right before she she passes mm -hmm. away and and mm -hmm. as the narration is going along, it says that she was born a witch or she was mm -hmm. a witch, and she but she wasn't really aware that she was a witch until she went to that to the shaman, mm -hmm. so. Um, I don't know if that had anything to do with making her who she was or anything mm -hmm. and then realizing her full potential l later on. Mm -hmm. But I just found that very interesting as to her character. I, yeah. I agree. I agree. It's like at, at, 
um, kind of gave a little bit more to the life that she had or the energy that she had mm -hmm. um, and the mystery. Yeah. yeah I and like I like that she paid, I like that she played the mom character too, because you really, yeah. see yeah. that connection mm -hmm. um, between the two. Yeah. You, you would see it when they film the guys, when they get up close and they look at her, they, they look like they were hypnotized almost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That little song they play at the beginning, um, it has some lines that says something like she did not know as a child or when she was married that she was born a witch with evil right. in her belly mm -hmm. and that yeah. that's passed on i i and it's it's not real clear are they talking about the mother or the daughter mm -hmm. but both of them mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. here's perita who doesn't she's the same and she doesn't know it mm -hmm. right right and we really and don't see it until she sees a shaman mm -hmm. with the drum Mm -hmm. uh, which has a great shot of her putting her hand out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I loved how her character too was, um, you know, you just really get on her side and like her and just like, a, she just had this life to her and this uh, vivacity. And so you really kind of are like, I really like, you know, I don't think about her being evil at all. She's just like this young, mm -hmm. alive woman and um I, I feel like that really added to kind of the heartbreak almost <laughs> that she yeah, was going to you know um but she also at the same time had no problem you know making decisions deciding she was going to go to the shaman doing these things mm -hmm. that she did she did to yeah. uh to get that power um yeah, and she, she, yeah she the really reason good. she goes she to the shaman good. was her husband kept going out on these um mm -hmm runs with the for the reindeer things and so he'd be gone for like weeks at a time and she kept she keeps getting lonelier and lonelier the longer he's away and it's just so she goes to this shaman um who looked a little bit more or less like a um a, a sideshow medicine man i don't think he was really really uh capable of doing anything but when he she gets there she hears this for the, for a love potion is what she wanted mm -hmm. to to mm -hmm. for her husband to, to attract her husband back mm -hmm. to her so he'll mm -hmm. stay and he didn't well he also count. did a cold shoulder to her at night when she was mm -hmm. yeah yeah he did. Yeah. So he was, it was becoming mm -hmm. dis distant with each other mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so she goes to him for help and i don't think he even realized the, the power she had mm -hmm. at the time and and uh, mm -hmm. he starts beating the drum with this little gidget on the top of it that would bounce it's got around. like a rune a rune stone or something yeah something mm -hmm. like that so he's reading after he stops beating on the drum the drums keeps going and she's like getting more and more so she puts her hand on the drum and it's just that was an awesome scene that was oh, so yeah. so intense yeah. and, and he freaked and out oh, mm -hmm. yeah, i'm a shaman but, 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 but you're a real witch yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh he was a, he was a, a real uh eccentric character too mm -hmm. the way he chanted his spells and then went like a new lu, 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 lu. I, I can't remember what all he was saying but it was hilarious and lives with a little goat in his hut and, mm -hmm. um has that yeah. drum head with the mm -hmm. weird designs on it and that i i don't know it's like a claw sort of thing that he's mm -hmm. beating it with Mm -hmm. Or a horn. I kind of thought. I thought maybe. It was oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy, yeah. Yeah, probably, yeah, but it, but it's carved to look like a yeah, like a hand. Yeah, but it looks like yeah, it's yeah, very intense. It's carved and, like the thing I used to get spanked with. That you know, uh, oh. I do remember that. Yeah, I that <laughs> but I, you know, I thought she she reminded me of like a female Larry Talbot. There was a lot of. Yeah, yeah, she's a tragic, uh, uh, tragic, yeah, a tragic, innocent. tragic hero, yes. an outsider. Mm -hmm. um, and she goes, mm -hmm. you know, Larry yes. goes to see Maria. Os well, how do you say her last name? Oscar. Os 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 yeah. yeah, and mm -hmm. you know, and that's a lot like this guy. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, and he, and yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of similarities in the whole uh, Wolfman legend, as shown by Universal. Uh, the a loved one ends up causing her demise yeah, i guess yeah, so. and has the yeah. the uh yeah the spear yeah, yeah. where's ralph you, bellamy when you need yeah where's ralph bellamy um i don't know yeah. I, I, I kept feeling that similarity mm -hmm. yeah it, it is mm -hmm. yeah it's a good point yeah i hadn't caught that but yeah you're right that that and that's 
yeah, that same feeling of that connection with this person who is, these things are happening and they're kind of villainous, but they are innocent. You know, you totally want to believe their innocence and watching him do these things. And mm -hmm. yeah. you know, you're totally on their side. And I love that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know you, you kind of yeah. question it when the one guy <coughs> wrestles the deer down and then she's there smiling. It's like, she yeah. goes full vampire on him. Yeah, but... like, well, maybe. <laughs> but that's the inner struggle. That's how what well, I think it is. <laughs> she was that smile on her face before she. Yeah, yeah. she was dangerous. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, just so yeah. people know, what we're talking uh -huh. about this is sort of her uh -huh. happy, appealing look. I mean, look at uh -huh. her. My God, she's mm -hmm. amazing. <laughs> I mean, she's just out there. She just and she doesn't. The other thing is, she doesn't have a whole lot of interaction with the other women in the. Right, village, right? That's it, isn't that? And it isn't like she's out hanging with the men all the time, it's just she's right, does what she enjoys. They said, uh, mm -hmm. the as a uh, as and in her real life, she was very active, very independent spirit, and mm -hmm. rode a Harley Davidson oh, for a time, you nice. know, <laughs> stuff like that. I um, that. she died of a uh, some sort of an aneurysm. No. Um, oh, no. The 1964, I think you said, Doc. That, so, yeah. um, anyway. Well, I feel like she she definitely, uh, especially in the church scene that you guys were talking about, where I was wondering if the other women were going to start looking at her and being like accusatory, but um, I'm kind of glad that didn't happen because that yeah. sometimes yeah. happens yeah. in these oh, in these movies. Oh, but the I was wondering. Right, gave her a little yeah, stink well, the bride, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Understandably so. That was, uh, <laughs> yeah. but um, I, I, so I, you guys talked about it being kind of like a silent film. And so her isolation, um, I just loved how they had the isolation in the visuals with just like the snow yeah. and the bleakness of it. And then the isolation of the people, you know, they're, they're, they live kind of close together, but they don't interact much at least she doesn't and the isolation of there not being much um speaking so it's mm -hmm. just like you totally get this alone feeling and i really yeah. i really liked how they did that i, li I liked it too i like that they made her she, it seemed like when she was a she was alone when her husband mm -hmm. was away mm -hmm. she was doing things that she liked mm -hmm. and and it didn't mm -hmm. And that it didn't seem the isolation didn't it seemed natural then, but she uh -huh. had that yearning for her husband, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you could really feel that as well. Mm -hmm. So she, it wasn't like she was pining away while he was gone, right. but you you could mm -hmm. still feel that that she really um, missed his presence. Being, right. Being well, there with yeah. Her. She had that passion. You know, she was very passionate. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, yeah so this this might. That's her husband, uh, Aslak, who's uh, played by Calervo Nisola. Aslak. What I, I didn't look his credits up, but in the commentary, they said he was a predominantly stage actor. Didn't, didn't do a ton of uh, movies. Um, and the, the shaman was Arvo Lahesma. Anyway, uh, so this is a little bit more of Mm -hmm. another example I, I love that shot in the bottom yeah. Yeah. of her standing mm -hmm. there with the the pole and holding on to the mm -hmm. antlers i mean mm -hmm. oh my god she i'm i'm watching this and i'm thinking what the hell don't these things ever gore anybody she she <laughs> she wrestled that. the one down like it I was right well, she ropes that reindeer yeah. walks yeah. up grabs yeah. them by the mm -hmm. bulldogs and down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh I can see you get a lot of that one guy. I thought, oh, yeah, man, yeah. Was warm. Mm -hmm. And this is when she's, you know, sort of thinking about her husband. I suppose he's like mm -hmm. leaving the next day. She's watching him sleep. Mm -hmm. and she, um, you can you can feel it. I mean, look at her. She's mm -hmm. she was really really good. But then she also has <laughs> these looks too. That oh, there's her eyebrows. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Amazing. The she has them on the bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, the top one I think is in the uh -huh. church during the wedding. Uh -huh. it, uh -huh. So yeah. that, and, and, and that's so weird. They don't have to say anything about it. The ceremony's going on. All you uh -huh. see is the husband turning around looking at her, and uh -huh. she's looking at him, and she can't uh -huh. he can't take his uh -huh. 
eyes off her, even though he doesn't look. I don't Happy know. He doesn't. It. He doesn't look <laughs> like he's leering or lurid. He just right. looks transfixed. Mm-hmm. You know. He's, mm-hmm. And then that bottom shot. You're right. That's towards the end when she's starting to change and her husband's not home. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, I think he comes home then and startles her. Mm-hmm. Well, he was by the fire, I think, and he was asleep, I think. And she, this, she was sneaking up behind him, like, "This is oh. my next." Uh, and we he turns the- around and he goes, "I had a dream." I had a bad dream, and then she's oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Didn't uh, we see the fangs then? We saw the fangs for the first time. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a couple, a couple shots. There they are. There they are. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's so hard. creepy on the bottom there. <laughs> it's so like, creepy. That's, you, that's the one where she's thing. looking in the mirror. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the well, one and like you said, just the shadows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The shadows are really awesome to portray that kind of darkness you know yeah. and you got all you this a lot of around you with the snow mm-hmm. and everything like that yeah and shots well, like she that goes to this creepy. i mean i just thought that shaman scene is, is like pivotal because mm-hmm. that's when it, it remembering back to that song that, that leads in then the shaman's doing his little beating and the, the little rune stone is bouncing around mm-hmm. and he's chanting or something and uh then it starts going crazy by itself and I think she reaches over and puts her hand on the drum. She does, she's mm-hmm. she's mm-hmm. not tapping it or anything. Right. And that thing is just going crazy mm-hmm. without mm-hmm. anybody tapping it. And he looks at her and shouts, witch. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think that's splits. when, <laughs> yeah, he, he realized, wait a minute, this, this person's far more powerful than I am. I'm, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, what do I do now? And then we don't really see what happens then, but she tries to go back later uh, and I can't, I don't know. I didn't get he, a was yeah, yeah, he, he was dead. He was dead. He was dead. Um, and his drum head was broken, which was broken when she was there. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I don't know. If... Yeah. I, but, but she did get the instructions to go to the, the, the stone God, the right? Stone God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's mm-hmm. supposed to, the very first thing she sees, she has to kill and mm-hmm. sacrifice to the stone God. Right. Which was a white reindeer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and that her, her husband, husband gave her, her yeah. to keep her company while he's mm-hmm. gone. Right? Yeah, and somewhere, totally uh, God, here we go. Thing, yeah. you know. these, these are such mm-hmm. great shots. It's a composition, know, amazing. Right? Yeah, Chad's composition, it's amazing. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like a reindeer graveyard around this. Mm-hmm. Thing. So, so like God this thing. scene in Jaws mm-hmm. where they're sailing away, and these mm-hmm. jo- they're yeah. sailing away right through the middle Beautiful. of these jaws. Skeletal mm-hmm. jaws. It's the same kind of thing, and mm-hmm. a lot of contrast, and just put mm-hmm. together very, very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because when she stabs the deer, it disappears, mm-hmm. right? But the little bell rem- stayed on mm-hmm. the, the one right. There. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's the bell hanging off one of the antlers, and there's mm-hmm. her leaving. Mm-hmm. And that's a creepy shot. Though, but... It is. It mm-hmm. is. What it, what it implies a lot too, but uh, and we get to see that area again later in the film. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, when she goes back to beg the gods to take take the witchcraft away from her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Crom doesn't well, listen. Crom. Yeah. Well, I mean. At when she first gets changed, then she, after she sacrificed, then she lays there for a long time and, and mm-hmm. then sort of wakes up. And one of the things I like about this is we're so used to Hollywood movies where the snow isn't snow. Yeah. <laughs> and so oh, when they had snow, snow on them, it melted. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was real. I noticed I mean, that too. Yeah. Uh, and it just gave a whole different look, I felt like, or a, a more, yeah. much more feeling of, of uh, reality, at least for yeah. me. The it's glitteriness funny, I, yes, on the snow exactly. made it, mm-hmm. gave it gave it even more of a, like a fairy tale mm-hmm. look to it too. I'm sorry, Daphne. I... Oh no, no, that's 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 kind of along the same vein. I was going to say, and I didn't know, I didn't, I couldn't put my finger on what it was that made me just kind of like, wow, you know, it's more realistic. And it was because it was real mm-hmm. snow and it was melting, and I felt like you could really get the idea of the heat that was going on. Like she was yeah. thinking these things and kind of, yeah. It, it was it was really pretty too the way it was melting on her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. There's one scene where 
when she goes back to the village, they have like a big block of snow on the end of a stick in a fire, and it's dripping yeah. into a cup mm -hmm. to make. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Water. yeah. So, wow, uh -huh. I have to remember oh, that just in case. <laughs> <laughs> um, the man, I forgot what I was going to say. Well, we could talk about that. That this is the only finished film that ever won the Golden Globe. Oh right, right. Yeah. So and it won a couple of awards. Um, okay. It's very the, good. The first one that <laughs> competed. Well, the first one that competed in the Can, Con, mm -hmm. Film Festival, uh, mm -hmm. and earned a Jean Cocteau-led jury special award for best fairy tale film mm -hmm. in 1953. Mm -hmm. And then, as Doc said, it won a Golden Globe uh, in 1956 for best foreign film. So. Very cool. And it wasn't, you know, if you go back, uh, think about, we we did Hexen, which mm -hmm. is Swedish, but still, it's got a lot of the, a lot of witch in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this was a big part too. I think the witches at that time, that was part of the uh, indigenous mythology or, or mm -hmm. spiritualism. I also liked how... Um... There was just so much going on in this movie, even though it wasn't bonking you over the head, you know, like I was really struck when she was leaving the shamans, uh, where she was getting ready to leave the shaman before he realized kind of how strong she was or something. But he was like, oh, yeah, reindeer, reindeer herder will be very attracted to you now or yeah, something or yeah. that the hunters will be very attracted to you now mm -hmm. or something and then but, later on when i realize you know it's like oh yeah they're going to be attracted to her because she's gonna she's a reindeer and they're going to kill her mm -hmm. you know that's i like, thought that too that, yeah i was like oh yeah like so that, they made that connection yeah. you'll be yeah. that's what it was you'll be irresistible yeah. to the hunters and um i just loved that and then i also loved how you know you could also see the Western Christian stuff kind of coming in. So like when she got married, it seemed like it was a much more nat uh, like a nature um, ceremony. And then when she's at the, when she's at the other wedding, it's a very Christian mm -hmm. ceremony. And it kind of made me wonder, like, are we, you know, like, Christianity coming into this indigenous place and is that kind of changing how you might think how these people might be I thinking think or how they're looking at yeah. her and stuff like that but it's but it's all just kind of like it's it's hitting you but you don't really know specifically what what it is but you're just getting mm -hmm. this vibe from it and uh, I really liked that it's so atmospheric mm -hmm. another thing I noticed I don't know if you guys picked up on it was when she would, was running not in the skis or anything, but when she was just running, she sort of ran with her head hunched down mm -hmm. I know and that. hunched mm -hmm. over, yeah. almost like a like she yeah. was a, a reindeer. That was a trait uh -huh. of a reindeer when they run. Mm -hmm. So right. that was. That oh, was her hair was just wild and thick. very uh -huh. subtle, but very yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, there's a shot at the end when there she's running across like a hilltop, and it's mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I think well, it was that's what that the image is from. Yeah, that top one. Yeah. It really, mm -hmm. uh, it really fits that because um, it, it's really animal like. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things I learned in uh, researching this was they were, this area was like one of the last or the last area of Europe to be Christianized, I guess, mm -hmm. or be exposed mm -hmm. to the Christian religion. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that there were times, now this, this doesn't make sense to me, so I'm, I'm hoping somebody that knows about this will say something. Um, that there were, uh, I think it was Norway and Sweden had forced education and integration into Christian based culture, kind of like what we in Canada did to mm -hmm. the indigenous tribes yeah. and things. Yeah. So, um, and that they even, you know, they tried to eliminate the language and, um, there was even some forced sterilization of certain Sami women into the seventies. Wow. Now, one of the things I read, though, was that Finland in their constitution said that the Sami people had it's it's in their national constitution that Sami people get to make their own decisions over their own welfare. Hmm. So mm -hmm. they have their own like parliament and stuff or, or mm -hmm. councils. I, I forget exactly what they were called. So I found it really mm -hmm. uh, interesting. Um, 
Yeah. So then there's the other thing. So when, so she kills the one guy and what they, what it seems like they do is uh, she changes into the reindeer and they see this, the white reindeer is a treasure. So they chase after it. They're actually probably going to try to catch it. And uh, once they get a hold of her or get close enough, uh, I don't know, but she changes back to herself, which is a vampire <laughs> that laughing. kills them. Laugh, and, laughing. Oh, yeah. laughing maniacally. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Which is what gives her away, right? Mm -hmm. um, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, she, wow, she's got some powers, too. So she, she, mm -hmm. she kills the one guy that way, and I don't know how many, two or three people. And then the one guy who thinks he's the big hunter and this this uh, <laughs> witch reindeer, weird reindeer vampire stuff is all a bunch of hooey. I'm going to go out and shoot it. And uh, when he gets a gun sights on her, apparently her power makes his gun explode or mm -hmm. something like backfire yeah. or something. Right in, her right in his face, yeah. Yeah, falls apart mm -hmm. into pieces right in his face and he mm -hmm. goes stumbling off across the mm -hmm. tundra. Um, the pose she cut when she was laughing at him as he's running away mm -hmm. sent chills down uh, his spine. Yes, oh, so God. she's like yeah. reared back with her hands on her uh -huh. on, on her hips, just laughing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, ooh, that sent that gave me the goosebumps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then and that she ends seemed up being to her downfall, all, right? Yeah, yeah. She seemed to uh, lure them all into this little crevice. Mm -hmm. Or uh, that was known as. Uh, they called it the Evil, evil Valley. valley. I, I saw it called the Devil's mm -hmm. Valley mm -hmm. someplace else, but mm -hmm. basically the same thing. And I think we have that here. So yeah. that was her. Yeah, yeah there are the reindeers mm -hmm. in that, that little valley. Um, yeah, she was, she was something else. I think I've got some other. There's some more of her... <laughs> Kind of wilding, man. That's just mm -hmm. I like the well, way the shadow on her her brow makes it look like her hair yeah. has a little yeah. sharp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's just a shadow. Mm -hmm. And I like how it makes me think back um, and in the initial in the introduction where they're going over the story and how she didn't know that she was a witch or or that she had this evil in her belly, and it's like she's full on witch vampire. She's not like. Mm -hmm. I mean, she she definitely is struggling, you know, kind of knowing that what she's done and, and stuff. But she's powerful and bad, and and I love that <laughs> she's just right in it. <laughs> well, she doesn't seem to be able to control her changes, mm -hmm. though. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. It looks like at yeah. night or by the moon or something like mm -hmm. that. Because yeah. show the moon, the moon right mm -hmm. before yeah. she changed each time. Mm -hmm. Well, at the end, she changes it in daytime, though. So here's, yeah, this is when she runs back and tries to uh, beg the stone god to release mm -hmm. her from the, from the spell. Yeah, uh, which which doesn't work. Now, what did you did you guys think anything about that? Is she doing that because she feels bad about what she's done, or is she doing that because she doesn't want to get punished or caught? Well, I think I think she's afraid her husband might go after her, yeah. and something might happen to him. And but I don't think. I don't think she was fully aware of what she does when she's under that the spell either. That whole that whole period where she's running away, she just is so feral. It's just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look at that top picture, mm -hmm. man. She's that's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. Right, bestial yeah. in that. Ax absolutely. So when well, when he go ahead, I was, Doc. I was gonna say her costuming changes too. Yep. It's, it's yeah, it's much darker. It's not as. Mm -hmm. uh, Ornate as the, right. the previous. No, she doesn't, have, she doesn't have the headgear anymore. You right. Yeah. Right. About. Yeah, and I feel like I. It was like I thought about it, and I was like, well, she did have dark hair because you did see her braids and everything, but she always mm -hmm. had like the white, the white headgear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, more kind of. I don't know. Just it made everything really light. So when she, her hair was just like totally crazy, it just had a really powerful change contrast against the snow mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah the uh yeah that, that's what that's what i love so much about this now i'm gonna mm -hmm. pop a couple up here i'm not sure if i've shown these or not yeah mm -hmm. we looked at mm -hmm. that one mm -hmm. yeah, because that go back to that one just a second and it'll show you what we're talking about because the one in the bottom you'll see that she's got the, the little mm -hmm. hoodie on and then she's mm -hmm. got the coat on and the coat is mm -hmm. totally Light colored. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, mm -hmm. we, we, presume, we presume it's white, but I would imagine right. it's 
it's actually probably like a sand color but mm -hmm. like a like a leather leather sand color but it mm -hmm. but when she turns she she loses all that and it gives mm -hmm. this change well that's you know, that mm -hmm. stone god too with the antlers mounted on the top mm -hmm. is so reminiscent of a lot of current yeah horror now they do things like that. oh wow mm -hmm. i didn't mm -hmm. think about that yeah mm -hmm. um I don't know where all it comes from. Uh, well, even Stonehenge, it. right? So just mm -hmm. one. I liked all the, you know, the skeletons around. I was like, man, I, yeah. I, it made me wonder, like, is this, a, like, is it really, is that a real place? Or did they mm -hmm. create that? Or just, mm -hmm. is it like this old, you Well, know, I'm sure they have sheds <laughs> all over the place with that many mm -hmm. reindeer, you know, that, mm -hmm. that you could. Well, that one there has a skull and everything, and the spine, yeah. that mm -hmm. looks really creepy. But it, yeah, this is this is still like the top. I just that's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, amazing shot. Um, and she's got right. the she's got the sacrifice in her with her too on that one. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, yeah. Oh, there's the hubby <laughs> with the spear. That's such a oh man, that's that ending got me. I know, uh, I know. It, it really got I know. me, and the the way they kept mm -hmm. panning out and panning, mm -hmm. it was just. And yeah. I know that I Claude, don't, don't bang him. <laughs> Claude rains. <laughs> well, because oh. it was like, didn't the reindeer kind of like stop and turn and move towards him? So it was kind of like yeah. this yeah. woman running towards her lover or yeah. running to attack or or what, you know, but it's you never know. all this motion mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and he's racing, you know, and it's like, no. Well, and he's he starting. To, he puts his spear down, and he starts to get his lasso ready. Uh -huh. But then, when she comes towards him, yep. she, he drops it and grabs the spear. Right. Yeah. Um, and we yeah. also see him. There's, there's some a great scene with him, basically forging or blacksmithing the spear uh -huh. again. Yeah, a lot, because, of, there's a lot of foreshadowing there uh -huh. for sure. Yeah. Because the witch has to be killed with cold, <laughs> cold iron. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, um, mm -hmm. And she's in the corner, kind of freaking you know yeah. right as, as you would think uh and then you find out everybody in the village is doing right. that because you see a bunch of them stacked up against right. the wall before they i love out. that whole that whole scene all those scenes where she runs out of their place and it's just everywhere mm -hmm. she's she hearing the, the noise of the forge the forges and everywhere she looks there's this stuff and then yeah and then they're piling up just yeah. piling up <laughs> mm. What a great movie. Yeah, surprising. Yeah. It's like a gem. I, I wonder mm -hmm. how many horror fans actually know about it. I'd, I'd never heard of it before. Jeff mentioned it. So it's the first yeah. time I've ever heard of it. It's not out there on the it, streaming. Yeah. You know, you could hear about it, but you're not gonna, it's not gonna show up on streaming yeah. services. When I uh, I did see it listed as being on Shutter in the UK as a amazon you know as as mm -hmm. buying it through amazon amazon shutter uk but mm -hmm. and the and the dvd i have is from england or the blu-ray and it says not for sale outside or not mm -hmm. for you know whatever so it's gotta yeah, be I actually looked... domain, though, wouldn't it? you think What's that it's, would it, you think it's in well i don't know if somebody got the rights to do the blu-ray it's probably no, I, I think they got, I think it's tight. They've got the, I think whoever did it in UK has the rights, you know, and, mm -hmm. and until somebody makes a deal, that's my guess. Mm -hmm. um, I forget exactly where I saw the the writing on it. There's another picture that I wanted to. I'm like, Doc, I'm thinking it's 1930s. It's, it's 1952. Yeah. It's 1952, yeah. but it does feel I like know. the 30s, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 I so kept funny. checking the date, like, is it the 50? Yeah, mm -hmm. I did the same thing. There's um, someone um, in our... Um, our, in our um, gruesome group um, who was talking about folk horror, Andy Morton, and he sent, he posted a couple of, of lists and this was on one of them. And so I was like, yay, we're going to be talking about it. But I hadn't, you know, I've, I've looked at different lists of folk, folk horror before. And if it was there, I'd never, it never really caught my attention. I don't remember hearing about it until, um, Jeff mentioned it a while ago that he was hoping it would be streaming soon. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Well, I had found it streaming before, but it wasn't a very good copy, and it uh, seemed like it was uh -huh. really dark. But now these, uh -huh. this seems pretty good, and it's it's uh -huh. been up there a while. Um, boy, this is driving me nuts. But that the closing scene, and I had a shot of it, but I can't find it. So hmm. the closing scene where he's kneeling over her. Mm -hmm. This is this is when he walks up to her. Mm -hmm. um, he thinks he's got the white deer, and it's her. He's, he's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you yeah. go. Now that yeah. that's classic <laughs> Larry Talbot hanging yeah. there at the end. <laughs> and uh and then we see we go back away down this valley and just see him kneeling there mm -hmm. as in the twilight kind of yeah. or dust. You see the vastness and, of what's yeah. so mm -hmm. yeah, it yeah, it got me too, Chad. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. it, it did. It was like I was like <gasps> No, mm -hmm. I clutched my pearls. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was just fascinated with everything about this, everything from mm -hmm. the cinematography to the way mm -hmm. that people lived and the culture and uh, the, this idea that she came up with it. And apparently, she was, she was the one that had the idea. Um, and then I worked it out with her husband. But they seemed to be a true collaborating couple she had collaborated mm -hmm. with him i think on a, on five movies of his so mm -hmm. he's also uh i believe much more well known as a cinematographer hmm. um it shows in the in the movie mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, it certainly does um another thing i found out is uh, boy do i have a list of good folk horror movies <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, there was actually one uh, that came out in, I can't remember if it was Fiddlin. It's like, this was so rare, but there was another movie that came out that was in Scandinavia. I forget the, which country it was called The Witch Who Came Back to Life. Oh. That, that's Ooh. supposed to be pretty good. Hmm. And when I tried to look it up, it's one of those ones that some places listed as The Witch and some places mm -hmm. listed as The Witch Who Came Back to Life. or mm -hmm. um, Which also so starred Psycho... Psycho Nilla Wafer. Psycho <laughs> Nilla Wafer. <laughs> I bring the dead back to life. A shaman. So, or a shaman. <laughs> All right. 43. Uh, he's got 43 credits as cinematographer and 18 as a director. Um, yeah. And I don't know which ones that she collaborated with him on. So there's a, although a, a bunch of them are short. So not that many features. Short, short, one, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like uh, six feature length films, one TV movie. Anyway. Um, I hope they get a region one release because I, I looked to, yeah. to, get, to get this and we used to have, uh, you know, a universal one, but we have don't and but it looked like it had really good stuff and it would have been great to learn more about mm -hmm. about the people and the movie and yeah so they, they uh yeah you'd hope that uh somebody like criterion or even uh yeah why doesn't Severin criterion or have one of vinegar these? syndrome mm -hmm. they, or arrow they pull up some of those international mm -hmm. things um all righty Anything else y'all want to talk about in relation to this? It's a, it's a good movie. I was yes. very surprised. Uh -huh. uh, like I said, um, finished movies, and I'm going to have to read it too. <laughs> I was like, man, Jeff's doing it to me again. But uh, And no, a song. And a song in it too. I was like, <laughs> I'm going to oh, strangle it. <laughs> I you know, it, I love the music too. I love the mm -hmm. music. Yeah, the music and was good. They had that same motif going over and over again, but it was so uh, it metamorph into so many different things. It could have mm -hmm. it was like the big action one, the terror, the happy, the whatever. So, it's, oh, I it's did the most important I, film that you've never heard of. I feel there you go. I like that. That's yeah. What a great way to describe it. Yeah. Um, and I did leave this one out. The top one is the uh, part of the reindeer race. When after they mm -hmm. after she wins the reindeer race, I think mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. the two go off 
chasing each other across mm -hmm. hill and dale and crash down the hill and the end up rolling <laughs> in the snow end up in the same cuddling. sled yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> but those sleds don't, don't those look cooler than hell i'd love yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah they don't have runners uh, on them they're like little uh -huh. boats you know? yeah. mm -hmm. i like the way he saves her from falling down the down the hill and then they just roll down the hill and roll yeah. all the way down. <laughs> come on all righty all right you come here um, often <laughs> Hey, this is my place. Yeah. Well, thing you know, they're, they're going off the dads going, That's, what are your yeah. intentions, young man? <laughs> Everyone oh. give me money. <laughs> so That's it for the white reindeer, a.k.a. Valkoinen Biura. See it. Finland. Yes. Uh, it's check it YouTube. out. It's on it looks good. YouTube. Mm -hmm. Also on archive.org. And mm -hmm. if you're so inclined, archive.org has... It's interesting. It has Spanish subtitles and English. And a freeze ray. Oh, no. <laughs> I was going to say a very nasty joke there. But I'm not gonna oh. do it. oh, no. Tell us how it is, Jeff. <laughs> Poor Jeff. <laughs> Oh man, it's it's storming here. Okay, <laughs> we, had, we had hail this afternoon. Yay, Jeff. <laughs> One bull testicle this big, the other bull testicle this big of moose. They were, they were about the moose. size of bull testicles. Uh, all right, uh, so check that out. Now we do have some feedback. Um, and Doc, I could. Uh, you want to read this uh, one from Jeff about the 10th anniversary that you forwarded? Yeah, to yeah. Okay. Um, Jeff Larimore, who's been a fan of uh, our podcast for quite some time and a a uh, very loyal patron. Thank you, sir. Uh, he says, Doc, you and Dave have given us H and R and Gruesome fans a wonderful gift of 10 years of your lives with this podcast, you know, which he's talking about that we started in 2013 and we're celebrating our 10 year anniversary is what he's chatting about. Um, you had a vision and worked towards it. Something very few people can honestly claim despite many, many tragedies and obstacles, you persevered and brought us a series of very, very cool things. Not just great podcasts, you literally created physical media as well. I'm very proud of my gruesome magazine, the shirts, the original Chad drawings, uh, stickers and magnets. I'm very proud to call you my friend, as I Aww. am as used as well. Uh, thank you, Doc and Dave, and thanks to all the original Thomas, Dixon, Santos, ROP, um, and subsequent members, past and present, for uh, just a fantastic series of podcasts. Bill, Jeff, Chad, Crystal, Whitney, Daphne, Christopher, guest host, and other fans. Thank you all very, very much. It has meant a lot to mm -hmm. me. It's meant Thanks. a lot to me too. Thanks, yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah I think it's Appreciate made it, means a lot to all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We 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 started in April 2013 doing Evil Dead, and we are now celebrating <laughs> our 10 year anniversary with the review of Evil Dead okay. Rise. Yeah, How that's so awesome. We, yeah, it's a synchronicity of that is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to be celebrating all year long, and uh, we'll wrap things up with our inaugural Gru Cruise <laughs> in February of 20. 24 um we're all gonna three days of horror and fun in the sun drink a bunch of grew yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> a bunch of grew all right well thank you jeff thank yes. you very much jeff and we thank have you. heard from jeff a little bit i he sent some uh excellent feedback uh, when we first started uh classic era um if you remember or not mm -hmm. chad i remember yeah um all right, episode 146, Fantastic Voyage from Andy L. And uh, this was mine. I'm going to go ahead and read this. I was surprised but happy that you covered this movie. I never really thought of it as horror in spite of the killer antibodies and white blood cells. <laughs> we don't We don't care what it's called. We just... Yeah. <laughs> uh, it could be John yeah. or Jason. Yeah, we're, we're pretty... Yeah, we're... We're, we're, uh, we we're flexible. Road. A wide road. Um, like you, I first saw it upon release in the theory, theater. I had gotten wow. into Asimov as my first real mature reading about a year earlier when I read I, Robot, 
was a oh, big step a up one. from the Hardy Boys. Mm -hmm. It was a big step up. And my Hardy earlier Boys. foray into science fiction with the adventures of Space Cat books when I was a second grader. See, now I read Tom Swift Jr. Those are the ones I read that got me into science fiction. If you don't know what I'm talking about, too bad. <laughs> I know Tom Swift. I never didn't know he had a son. Uh, well, there was an original Tom Swift. There was Tom Swift Sr. way back in the, I don't know when. And then in like the 50s, 60s, Tom Swift Jr. was, uh, there was like a book coming out like almost every month, you know, and they were mm -hmm. little hardcovers like the Hardy Boys books mm -hmm. at that time. My, my dad right. was my dad was into like Buck Rogers. And oh, yeah. For, yeah, yeah. Well, early, I, when I was young, I got my mom to get me get him a for, from me but she bought it a buck rogers compilation of all the early um uh newspaper serials that they oh, did, right? oh, and, oh, and, it, and we yeah it was great it was that's that was my first introduction to anything mm -hmm. sci-fi i was maybe somewhere between five and eight but he loved yeah. buck rogers wow that's huge, al williamson huge uh, book i mean it was about Williams. like that big um no i think it well Maybe, may have predated that. Maybe. Okay, back to Fantastic okay. Voyage. <laughs> <laughs> we digress. So when the book came out, I bought the paper back right away and devoured it. I honestly don't remember if this was before the film, but I was, but I also thoroughly enjoyed the movie as well as the book and later watched the film a few times over the years on television, but I haven't watched in quite a while now. I got to see Asimov in person in 1972 oh, wow. and got an autograph for the gods themselves. Wow. Cool. But unfortunately, it was lost in the 80s by my brother. Brothers. I got a lot of comic books that are gone because of that. Um, <laughs> by my brother who lent it out when I was living in another state and never got it back. My sister had the distinct dishonor of being hit on by the married Asimov in the Ooh. 70s while recording an interview with him. So obviously she wasn't a fan <laughs> after that. Can't blame he her. He did have a reputation of being a bit of a Lothario, which does kind of fit with the author of The Sensuous Dirty Old Man. <laughs> man, I, I wish I hadn't found that out. No, I'm not reading it anymore. <laughs> no, no. I, I did want to mention that Asimov did write a sequel Fantastic Voyage 2, The Brain, in 1987. I never got around to reading it, but maybe one day. Mm. There's been rumors about it being remade a number of times by James Cameron, Guillermo del Toro, and Sean Levy, all mentioned at different times, but still nothing definitive on it. But I'm not convinced that a remake is really needed. It's a fun movie of its own and stands well on its own. As you that, can see, that, I'm still... Um... I'm sorry, that Sean Levy guy, he's famous for doing uh, Zombie Nightmare, isn't he? That's what he's <laughs> well, famous for. I, I, I was thinking it was... Uh, and then he did something called Stranger, Stranger Things. Stranger that's what things. I was thinking. I've yeah. never heard of that. That's what he's famous for. But, uh, as you can see, I'm still a bit behind with my podcast, but still appreciate all the crew crew do. Take care, Andy L. Right, thank you. Thanks, I appreciate Andy. it, Andy. Thanks, Andy. This guy, Andy's had a heck of an interesting life. I think it was his mother who was hit on by, uh, was it Harpo Marx or? <laughs> yeah, Lee, he must have had the most beautiful Harpo family. Uh... Oh, well, he worked, uh, she worked, <laughs> yeah. she, she worked for the uh, Philip Morris office, I think. Yeah. Oh, in wow. New York, the agent. So he had several stories about different celebrities. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. his sister was involved in, was it the children? You remember that, Chad? That 1980 movie we did? Was it that? Or was it something else? Oh, Lord. Oh, see, I do this all the time to him. Now he'll write it again. <laughs> Tell me what I'm screwed up about. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, Enough I appreciate of... that he mentioned iRobot because that was the first Asimov that I read. And I loved oh. all of those in that. All of them. I read a ton of short stories first and then the mm -hmm. foundation original mm -hmm. foundation trilogy all right here's one on a couple on rosemary's baby our 150th episode Yay. it just went live yesterday so very cool nice. uh one from jerry chandler uh i don't know chad you want to take that sure you want me to read it in jerry's voice no yes please yeah. sure <laughs> rosemary's baby is really damned near a perfectly done film it's really a shame it's so tangled up in the eyes of many in Roman Polanski's problems. Not sure about the new guy. 
seems a little green and inexperienced overall with the horror podcasting thing, but put him under your wing. Do your best to bring him along, and he might get the hang of it. <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> I agree. It is a perfectly done film, just about. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, and then uh, mm -hmm. one from Alistair Hughes on Rosemary's Ow! Baby, Daphne. Sure. Hi, Al. Um, Alistair Hughes. Dear Classy Era, I'm sure this is no reflection on the departure of the eternally missed Miss Coyazo, but golly, you guys got all intellectual up in our faces for episode 150. <laughs> oh. and, I, and I loved it. Surely it can't have been because of an of the addition of Doc, can it? No. <laughs> Not sure. I thought that would bring us down a few points. Actually, but... anyway. As I as I've said to Daphne, <laughs> you often have me in perox paroxysms of helpless laughter, but I've never doubted that you can just as easily bring it when it comes to thought provoking and scholarly analysis as well. Paroxysms. See who's intellectual now. <laughs> Congratulations for having the courage and honesty to address the art versus the artist debate, which is so prevalent at the moment. None of you shied away from it and all offered extremely well-considered points of view on Polanski and his films. I think you pitched it exactly right for your 150th while still giving us generous lashings of that delicious classic era sauce on top. And the final garnish was a delicious sprig of quarter mass i just wouldn't have been complete without one <laughs> love you guys keep you up the wonderful work and here's to your bicentennial alice love you too al love you too thanks Thank al. You, al. <laughs> i was gonna feel bad if you didn't bring up quarter mass <laughs> I, I i knew he was gonna say something hey it's almost like you can't let it just just go past and... we don't just want that r in there it's I, it just slides Yankees. in sometimes i'm sorry <laughs> oh i thought it, i thought it was quarter mass for years i you know before i actually saw the movies when i'd read it i'd read it read over it too fast i think it was anyway. <laughs> thanks alistair i'll try to i keep trying to do better um <laughs> And here's one from Mikey Z on 149 X the Unknown. That was Chad's pick, right? Was it? Yes. You want me to read yeah, it? You want to take that? Mikey the Z says, always confuse this with Quatermass too, <laughs> which also had a blob-like creature, although that was of extraterrestrial origin that originated by transforming an astronaut into its final entity. That's my favorite Quatermass movie, by the way. X the Unknown is unknown to me, I think, somewhere in the recesses of my mind. I might have caught this on a midday TV offering in my ute. He's from Jersey. I think. As, as, it has, as it has my favorite number two in it, I must seek it out and get back to the Groove Crew with my findings. Sorry to hear Whitney will not be a frequent member anymore. Yeah. Success in your endeavors, Miss Whitney. Hope to hear from you again in the near future. I offer my services to DOH if you need anyone in a pinch, especially if talking about any uni horror classes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Uni horror. Universal. Universal. Thanks, Mikey. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mikey. I think that is it for feedback. So everybody, please leave feedback, leave comments on the YouTube channel, subscribe. To the gruesome magazine youtube channel even if you don't listen to it <laughs> i guess you couldn't hear me doing that uh if you're on the audio but listen app, to listen to audio six. if you're if you're on the audio app so listen to the audio, <laughs> just just cut in there to the gruesome magazine youtube channel and su hit subscribe we would appreciate it we are gradually ticking upwards uh also plenty of ways to stay in touch you can leave these comments here on the YouTube channel or at Gruesome Magazine's H and R DOH podcast Facebook group or the Gruesome Magazine website, gruesomemagazine.com, or you can send an email to feedback at gruesomemagazine.com. Uh, you can also join us at our Patreon. I don't know what do we call that? Is that a Patreon site or a Patreon group? Or yes, do they have a name for those <laughs> on uh, Patreon for little or nothing? <laughs> You, yes. <laughs> um, monthly because it, it does cost money not that we're paid because we're not i just um, got a raise that one <laughs> that's why it's easy to give you a, a percent raise 
<laughs> Double or nothing. Um, Double anyway, or nothing. Uh, yeah, so you could get the you know, this. This should hopefully go out to uh, Patreon peeps um, tomorrow. A link would go out, and but it wouldn't actually get, wouldn't actually get published until what was yesterday, uh, May twentieth, is when it would go live. So um, that's true for all the decades of horror. Doc's got all kinds of stuff he's planning right mm -hmm. for the uh, 10th anniversary yep well the may uh, giveaway should be up on the 15th cool um all right what, what will it be <laughs> that's it for this episode <laughs> but every two weeks we'll be focusing on a specific film release between 1920 and 1969 next up is one chosen by daphne what are we doing? il demonio and that's currently on Shutter, right? Uh huh. Yes, it is. Uh, um. Oh, I like this. A, I haven't seen this. A lonely, sexually inhibited young peasant is subjected to an exorcism <laughs> after she hexes a man who rejects her advances. Jeff, we, we had Jeff at sexually inhibited. Man. Yeah, that is. <laughs> Delia Lavi is the star, <laughs> and. Uh, I'm not familiar with the writer or the directors, although I'm sure somebody will chastise me for that. Mm -hmm. Brunello Rondi, director and writer, along with Hugo Guerra and Luciano Martino. From I haven't seen it. I'm super excited to see it. Have you guys, Doc, Chad, I've have you guys seen, seen it? it? Never uh, seen it. It has a... Uh, First I've heard of it, actually. There's a 7.2 awesome. rating on IMDb, so it's probably kind of artsy-fartsy. Yeah. You know. mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably a musical deal number. with it <laughs> deal. deal with it <laughs> oh dear well we skipped taglines with chad but i made them up anyway so oh it dang it what what happened we didn't, maybe it could we be a special tag patreon lines. thing taglines what, tag there's lines? a couple no. taglines i i put Definitely. on here but i made them up uh yeah, you made up anyway. the tagline? I did. I did. Well, it's sort of. I translated I'm, I'm them. I'm so confused. I'm try I translated them from foreign posters, but they were they didn't make any sense. Oh man, it's a good good we did the translation read these. Was gone. Tagline one Finnish film based on an old Lapish fairy tale. It Second might be one that. is a witch vampire. Oh, <laughs> Excuse me. I thought I could get it in before that. <laughs> and the oh second one? Goodness. A witch, a vampire, and a mystical beast. I did it. That's a total oh, two. of three, I think. So. Okay. <laughs> That's enough. All right. Back's like going, holy crap. What are they doing? All right. I got food in the microwave waiting for me. Yeah, I, I got food. <laughs> Egg rolls. That's got sushi spoiling on the outside. On the, the mm. um, catch us again here in two weeks for another great horror movie of the classic era, as only decades of horror can do it. Say good night, guys, and thanks so much. And thanks to uh, Jeff and Mikey and Jerry and Alistair and anybody yeah. else I left out. That thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes, um, we love feedback. Yes. Say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.